Praise the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, come let us pray. Please close your eyes. Open your hearts. Become conscious of the presence of the living God within you and around you. Our God is a God who lives. Our God is a God who is with us all the time. In the Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 16 the Lord says, I will pray to the Father and He will give you another helper who will be always with you. Feel the presence of that Spirit of God who is with you right now. The Spirit of God is within you and around you. Submit yourself to the Spirit of God. Bring all your burdens, all your worry, all your anxiety, all your fears, all that to the Lord. Just surrender to the Lord. Bring all your negative feelings, all your feelings of despair, discouragement. Bring to the Lord and surrender to the Lord. This recollection is a time for reformation. It's a time for renewal. It's a time when the Lord will touch us and transform us. Therefore, bring your whole being to the Lord. Surrender yourself to the Lord. Say, Lord, I come to you. I bring all my burdens and worry. I bring all my anxiety to you. I bring all my fears to you. I believe, Lord, you are with me right now. I present all these to you, Lord. Take possession of all those, Master. Free and liberate me right now, Master, that I am able to lift up my eyes to your presence, that I am able to reflect on your words seriously, deeply. Surrender yourself, my sister, my brother. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to take possession of you. Your senses, your body, your mind, your heart, your sexuality, your dreams, your plans, your fantasies, your imaginations. Surrender your whole being to the Lord. Let the Lord take possession of you. He can reform us. He can renew us. In fact, He wants to renew us. Surrender yourself. Spend a few moments in deep silence. Let the Spirit of the Lord take possession of you right now. We are going to silence. Please open your eyes. My dear sisters and brothers, I wish to thank the Lord for this beautiful opportunity that we have to reflect together on various topics to help us to recollect, to seek reformation from the Lord, renewal from the Lord. Our God is a God who makes all things new. We already reflected on it. And He wants to make us new every day. It's possible only when we submit ourselves to the Lord. A recollection is a time when we really submit ourselves to the Lord. Bring ourselves to the Lord fully. Allow the Lord to work in us. Like a potter working with clay, similarly, we surrender ourselves like clay into the hands of the Lord. The Lord will do great things. In the last 25-30 years, I have been seeing how the Lord works in the lives of people, thousands of people. When we submit ourselves, the Lord will work wonders and miracles in our lives. My dear sisters and brothers, one of the unique phenomena in the Bible is God choosing people, God calling people. God calling people to work for His kingdom. And interestingly, the kind of people that God chooses and calls are people apparently incapable and weak. Think of Abraham. God called Abraham to build a new nation. The Lord said to Abraham, I will make you a father of great nation. While we know that Abraham had no child. A childless man is called 
to make a father of a great nation. Imagine. Similarly, take the example of Moses. God calling Moses to liberate his people from the slavery of Egypt. To liberate them from the hand of Pharaoh. While we know Moses had ran away from Egypt for fear of Pharaoh. Think of Isaiah. The Lord is calling to be a prophet while he himself says, I am a man with unclean lips. And God cleanses him and makes him a great prophet. Jeremiah, he says, I don't know, I am a child, I don't know how to speak, is made a great prophet. And that's how the Lord does. In the New Testament, take for example, people like Peter, Simon and others, fishermen, Nobody in the sight of the world made his disciples. Take the example of Saul, a person who was persecuting Christians, now is called to become a messenger of the gospel. That's what God does. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28, Paul says, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are. That's what God does. He chooses the weak, the small ones, incapable ones. My dear sisters and brothers, one of the words from the Bible that has affected my life very, very deeply is John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 16. I am sure you have read it many times. Let us reflect on it once again. The Lord says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. A very, very powerful text. The Lord says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. It is not I who chose the Lord, but the Lord chose me. God chose me. God who is powerful, all-knowing, who knew my past, who knows my present, knows my future, knows my weakness, my strength, that God chose me. God chose me. I believe all of us need to become conscious of the preciousness of our vocation. All of us need to become conscious of the preciousness of our vocation. God chose me. This went deep into my mind and heart. God chose me. The all-knowing, all-powerful God chose me. Look at the word the Lord is using. The Lord says, I chose you. I chose you. From among many, the Lord chose me. I am chosen by God. Quite often we ask a question, why did the Lord choose me at all? I am so weak, I am so helpless, I am not very intelligent, I am not very holy. My family background is nothing great. Why did God choose me at all? Why did God choose me? We ask sometimes this question. And the answer I find in Mark chapter 3 verse 13, where the Lord says, the word of God says, the Lord climbed a hill and called unto himself those whom he desired. The Lord climbed a hill and called unto himself those whom he desired, he wanted. I believe that is the only reason that the Lord chose me. He wanted me. Not because I am better than others. Not because I am more talented than others. Not because I am holier than others. But just because He wanted me. I am His personal choice. He did not want my brother. He did not want the one who was sitting next to me in the classroom. But he wanted me. I want you. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Very beautiful, very powerful. The Lord says, 
before i formed you in your mother's womb i knew you before your birth i consecrated you and appointed you as a prophet to the nations before your birth i consecrated you god wanted us we need to become more and more conscious of the preciousness of our vocation so the lord says you did not choose me but i chose you you are god's personal choice my sister my brother you are god's personal choice god chose you very very personally today when you get time sit quietly alone try to listen to the lord telling you i chose you you are my personal choice listen to what paul says in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 consider your own call brothers and sisters not many of you were wise by human standards not many were powerful not many were of noble birth paul reminds us he says consider your own call brothers and sisters not many of you were wise by human standards not many were powerful not many were of noble birth is not all because of that just because he wanted us so every one of us is a personal choice the lord says you did not choose me but i chose you further he says and i appointed you every one of us is appointed by the lord each one of us is appointed by the lord every one of us is an agent of god wherever we are we are agents of god we are supposed to represent god the lord says i appointed you god took you seriously god took you seriously and he has appointed you it's too powerful too deep god appointed you in my life i have always taken it seriously my appointment is by god god has placed me here my primary accountability is to god and not to any human being then secondary others god appointed and further the lord says i appointed you to go and bear fruit every word is very very important he says i appointed you to go and bear fruit the lord says i appointed you to go the go dimension of a christian vocation we christians are called to go why did the lord say i appointed you to go and bear fruit because we don't want to go we want to confine to ourselves my place my liking my convenience my interest my benefit my people my culture we want to be confined to ourselves but the lord says you cannot afford to be confined to yourself i have appointed you to go get out of yourself get out of yourself in the gospel we find again and again the lord telling go to the whole world the lord sending the disciples to villages and towns go 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 all of us are called to go out of ourselves a christian cannot afford to live for himself a religious or a priest cannot afford to live for himself or herself we are all chosen and appointed to go then the lord says to go and bear fruit our call is to bear fruit it's very very important our call is for a mission we have a mission and the mission is to bear fruit we are called to bear fruit in the gospel of luke chapter 13 verses 6 to 9 the lord narrates a short parable the parable of a fig tree that was planted by the master in a vineyard right in the middle of the vineyard he planted a fig tree and it had grown up and came of age to bear fruit he went to the tree three years consecutively and he did not find a single fruit and therefore he called the gardener and said cut it down it has no right to stand here cut it down because it has no right to stand here because it does not bear fruit a tree is supposed to bear fruit we are all supposed to be bearing fruit 
in the gospel of matthew chapter 21 verses 18 and 19 we read jesus was coming from bethany to jerusalem it was in the morning and he was very hungry and there was a fig tree again on the road side and he went seeking fruits on it and he did not find any fruit very interestingly it is said there that he found nothing except leaves nothing except leaves all leaves and leaves and leaves no fruits quite often our lives can be like that lot of leaves but no fruit so busy and yet no fruit so many institutions so many things but no fruit we can be also like that fig tree full of leaves and no tree, fruit and what did the lord do the lord cursed it and it got dried up a similar thing can happen to us when we do not bear fruit in the gospel of matthew chapter 3 verse 10 we read john the baptist saying even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees every tree therefore that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire john the baptist says the ax is laid on the root of the trees every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down we are all called to bear good fruit we should be bearers of good fruit bearers of good news not bad news it's very very important so we are called to bear fruit we are called to bear good fruit in john chapter 15 verse 8 the lord says my father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and be my disciples my father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and be my disciples so we are called to bear much fruit and we need to bear much fruit a christian a religious a priest is called to bear much fruit we cannot be satisfied with the minimum the lord who surrendered himself to the father the lord who offered up himself for the sake of the whole world whole being he expects us to bear much fruit not a few fruits not minimum fruit but much 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 fruit so the lord says i have chosen you and appointed you to bear fruit now what does it mean to bear fruit let us try to examine a tree a fruit tree and fruit now let's say for example this is going to be a season of mangoes in some places after that jackfruit but papayas all the time have you ever come across a papaya tree enjoying papaya fruit <laughs> do you ever see a mango tree enjoying mangoes <laughs> do you ever see a jackfruit tree enjoying jackfruits <laughs> that is the meaning of bearing fruit a life for others other center life imagine that tree bears fruit taking such a lot of pain but all those fruits are enjoyed by others not by itself a beautiful example the lord is placing before us all of us are called to bear fruit we are called to live and other center life the lord says you did not choose me but i chose you to go and bear fruit and we are called to bear much fruit my dear sisters and brothers today we shall reflect on our call all together every one of us is precious in the sight of god god has chosen us very very personally possibly today we shall reflect on our own vocation story look back into your life think of the day when you came to the lord when the lord called you the lord um inspired you to leave your home and work for the lord think of that day try to recall the feelings of that time recapture the feelings of that time the zeal of that time let us today reflect on our own vocation I wish to stop here. Remember the Lord says, "You did not choose me. I chose you." Every one of us is a personal choice of God. Every one of us is a personal choice of God. 
Come, let us pray. Please close your eyes. Lord, I thank you for these moments of grace. You are a great God. You are a God who loves us. You are a God who considers us as great and worth and worthy. Lord, you make us worthy. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, you say, You are precious in my sight and I love you. You are precious in my sight and I love you. Lord, help us to become more and more conscious of the preciousness of our cash. Help us to become more and more conscious of the preciousness of our call that you have called us very, very personally. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful gesture of love towards me. I know you called me. I know you chose me. I know you want me. I surrender my life to you. Help me to live the way that you expect me. Help me to bear fruit and good fruit and much fruit. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.